So if you're wondering why I haven't done videos in a while, I actually was so busy with AI coding because I super got into it for no reason at all. And then I got completely absorbed with it. So because of my own work, I have a bunch of websites and there were a few things that I always wanted to do, but I'm using like WordPress and stuff like that. And it's just extremely limited. So what I was always doing is as much as I could with WordPress, but I always had so many ideas I could never do it. And then I started just AI coding for fun. So I got Cursor AI and just started coding and see what works. I don't know how to code. I tried to learn it a while ago, but I didn't have the time and I was so busy. So I just dropped it. And with AI, it's just amazing. You can literally just code everything. You have to be ready to learn anyway. You have to read code. You have to understand things. You have to understand changes. You have to know a lot just about security and stuff like that. So you can't fully vibe code yourself to anything. You, you still have to think, you have to learn. So I learn every day about this. But the whole point is that I realized that a lot of things are going to die. And I thought, okay, what is most of SaaS at the moment? SaaS software as a service. Clearly, huge industry. It just means that you have a software and you sell it as a subscription. That's it. But it can be anything. And I was paying for this product called Typeform, which is basically it's a form you can embed on a website. You can make it a contact form. It can be a quiz. It can be data collection, whatever it is. And I was paying like 500 bucks a year, which is fine. You know, like whatever. It serves a purpose. But I thought, like I can do that myself. So at that point, I've already built a few things and I thought, okay, let's do this. And I made my own version. It's way better. I think my inquiries, so people reaching out to me across my websites has increased. I want to say at least double. It's, it's a lot. So I just made a way better form. It's super simple, super easy, very efficient. And I thought, okay, if I can do that with this tool, how many tools are going to die? So here's my prediction. I think all of these little SaaS tools that do like small things, you add a banner to your website, you can integrate this. It automatically sends you a notification for this, right? All of these are going to die. I think they're all going to disappear because no one is going to pay for, hey, for 20 bucks a month, you get the lowest tier and for 50 bucks a month, you get the premium feature where you can do this completely meaningless thing that whatever, or you get two contracts, whatever it is. All of these things, they're just not worth it. You can make it for free. You can literally make it for free. If you use something like Cursor, you might be ending up paying for like 20 bucks a month for it, but you can do it for free if you want to. If you don't want to have the convenience, you can use whatever different models or other things, right? But this is crazy. There was this guy who actually put out a tweet where he said, hey, I built this DocuSign alternative and DocuSign is something that I also use. I also pay for this, another SaaS software service. So he built an alternative version that does everything that you get on pro features for DocuSign, but it does it for free. And DocuSign sent him a cease and desist letter, which is like a normal letter a lawyer sends you to stop or we sue you, something like that. Or if someone is just trying to be ridiculously threatening, which I had before, is when a person sends you a cease and desist letter, literally he wrote it himself. And then he sent me a season to sister, which was completely wrong. Like this was just a lunatic, right? But not even for a lawyer. So, but they sent him a season to sister letter and told him to stop, which is interesting. But then I thought, okay, how many of these big companies, and DocuSign I will count as a big company, they're a public company. Their stock price is down for a long time now after the jump in 2021 because of the zero interest rate policy where the interest rates were low, money was cheap, everybody was spiking. But that is a simple product. It's just online signatures. There's no magic behind it. The magic is the legal reasoning behind it that it's going to be valid. But there's no magic. You send someone a document, there's a signature, you have an audit trail, you just have your database and you collect all the data. It has to be compliant with whatever legal standards, but that's it. So how is that a company? And the same with Zoom. I think with Zoom, everybody realized that because Zoom had this spectacular fall because Google Meet made meetings free. I think they're still free. Everybody has their own Microsoft Teams. Nobody needs Zoom. Whenever someone comes and they say, hey, can we use Zoom? Which happens extremely rarely. I'm still thinking, oh, interesting. You're still using Zoom. How are they doing? You know, it's like during the pandemic, everybody used them. But what I'm thinking is simple apps going to disappear, type form, stuff like that. 100% going to disappear. WordPress, 
I think WordPress probably relatively efficient from a company perspective because I don't think they need a lot of staff to keep up this thing. They have like a developer community and the developer community is creating the plugins, which is most of the work because there are just so many plugins. So this is done by individual developers that WordPress does not have to pay. So I think as a business, WordPress is going to exist for a long time, of course, because they are so efficient as a business. But as something that people use, I think it's going to die. I mean, in the sense of that people are just going to think, okay, it doesn't make sense to use WordPress. WordPress is clunky, it's huge, it's annoying, and you rely on plugins. I had five or six websites on WordPress. I now have one on WordPress. And the only reason I haven't transferred it yet because it's a mess to transport a site to do your own from scratch project, it, that's easy. But to make sure all of these orphaned WordPress pages are going to be migrated, that's a mess. So what I actually did is I took Google Search Console, Google Analytics, I looked for all the landing pages and then I compared this with the new site which had a sitemap and which had all the pages and I had to make sure I had all the pages with the content, it's just a nightmare. I'm going to do it in the future for sure because if you do it from scratch, you have so many things you can do. Like I tripled my Google clicks in the new site after migrating it. This was already generating SEO content from Google. And it's like tripled now because I could integrate new ideas on how to capture traffic and a few things work really well. And I could never have done this with WordPress. And I always did like little things to experiments in WordPress and they worked, but there was stuff I couldn't do. And now with the like Next.js just from scratch, like a cool website, really fast, really efficient. Okay, long story short. So the guy, he got a season assist from DocuSign. My prediction is and th this would be amazing. I hope this happens because it would be an amazing company. I believe there's going to be a company that's going to realize basically the model of bending spoons. If you remember, I think I talked about them on, on a live stream or something, but bending spoons, this Italian company, they said, hey, we're really bad at developing a new product and finding a new product market fit. We're not good at that. But what we are good at if we have a product that works, we make it better. We're really good at that. And they found the niche. So what they started doing is they bought companies that had a good product, but they're not good at the execution. And they made them really good at the execution. And then they just made that better, better user experience, everything. They did that with Evernote, for example, and a few other apps, I think Meetup and so on. So they bought the companies that produce the app like Evernote move them to Italy, and then they get their wizard on it, the team of wizards on it to make this the best app possible. And it works, like the app has gotten way better. There's still like some things, but it's Evernote. I use Evernote every day. But I notice a tremendous improvement in Evernote. So they're really good at that. I think there's going to be a company going to take the next step. They're going to say, we don't need to buy these companies. We know DocuSign, Typeform, and all these little SaaS things, some of them are really big. We know they have a clear product market fit. We know that. So what are we going to do? We're going to just copy them. If you have really good developers and you use extensive AI, just make AI the co-developer and you just copy them all. There's no IP in software or very little IP, except for Amazon's checkout button that expired a while ago there's almost no patents in software. So they can just copy them. They know they have product market fit. They can use the tool, copy all the features. And what they do is they give you a subscription that is called One Sauce. And for that, you pay 20 bucks a month and you get access to every single SaaS in their portfolio. So instead of paying 50 bucks for one, you pay 20 bucks for everything. And the margins are going to be obviously low, but it's a scaling game. If you can grow, this is a company that could have 1 billion users. Because imagine how many people subscribe to at least one SaaS tool, at least one. I think you can come with 1 billion people who would switch. If they say, okay, I don't need DocuSign, I use them, get 20 bucks. It's just the bundling effect. And with AI, this is possible. With AI, it doesn't have to be 20 bucks a month, it can be 50 bucks a month, but it would be worth it because you get a thousand different SaaS tools or more. So I think this is going to happen. So that's short anecdote. I hope it's going to happen. I think it would be an amazing company. That can, this can be a big tech giant. Google probably is not going to do that. 
A lot of companies could do it, like Google could do it, Microsoft could do it. They don't want to go out. It's a bit exploitative because you copy everybody, but you can legally do that. So I think someone is going to do that. Maybe it's going to be like company from India that says, hey, we don't care. We're just going to copy them. This can be a big tech, a global big tech giant.